and welcome to Brew TV, your one and only beer and brewing TV show located right here in Perth. Every week we'll be exploring the world of beer and brewing in Western Australia, from the home brewer to the professional breweries and everything else in between. And for you cider drinkers and ginger beer lovers, we'll also include you as well. Welcome to Brew TV. It's great to see you again. On tonight's show, we're down here at the Bush Shack Brewery in Yellingup to talk to you a little bit about things called adjuncts in beer. More on tonight's show. Good old Bush Shack Brewery Chili Beer. One of the reasons why we've come to the southwest to get warm. Any of you that have been to the Araluan Chili Festival will know that this one's got that beautiful little bite and something that's a little bit different in beer, and that's adding adjuncts. So Daniel, tell us about the adjuncts and how you use them in your beers. All right, John. Well, as you know, we've got a number of different ingredients that we use in our beers and they're used in this for specific beer brewing purposes, not to actually flavour the beer. The ambers are the classic example of what I'm talking about. With our chilli beer, the chilli is actually used to boost the Pilsner malt flavours, not to be the main flavour of the beer. So you have a beer that comes across as a traditional German Pilsner, with just a mild afterbite. There's no capsicum chilli-like flavours residual in it. Similar with the strawberry blonde, we've used 30 kilos of fruit in that brew, but it goes into the fermentation process. So all that fruit flavor along with the fructose, the fruit sugars is eaten up during fermentation. You get a higher alcohol percentage, which also aids in the development of the flavors of the beer. But you end up with a cloudy, dry tasting pale ale, not a mouthful of strawberry jam. Uh, twisted lemon lager, lemon rind, nice bittering agent, okay? And mandarin peel in the spelt wheat. So spelt wheat's one of the, a newer one for us. It's been around for a couple of years. We've used a raw spelt grain sourced from the Paronga Ups down in Albany. That uh, grain is then combined with mandarin peel in a similar way that uh, Hogarten use raw modern wheat, curacao orange rind and coriander in their wheat. Basically, it is a bit of a homebrew type setup. It is, um, it is just larger, and it does, at the end of the day, make beer. So um, a little different to most of your brew houses work. A little more rustic, uh, definitely more hands-on. So you've got the mash tun here, which is a 10 hectolitre system, but effectively you can only brew uh, up to 650, 700 litres. Also, our fermenters um, in the background can limit us to what we can make. Uh, with the kettle over here, it is a little bit different to how we heat things. Uh, it does hold uh, 1,000 litres also. This little vessel here holds 200 litres and it also has a heating element in it. So that's what gets our rolling boil as it recirks through. A couple other valves for your whirlpooling and for your drawing off. Um, and that's it in a nutshell. Uh, we get quite good extraction with that boiler too. So um, although it does look a bit different and it is a different way of boiling your wort, uh, it does the job. Definitely does. Absolutely. And that's all that matters. From a, from a small brewery point of view, you're one of the very few people that actually bottle their beer. That's it. Uh, to get a, a bottling machine is quite an expensive um, piece of equipment. This one to have. Yeah. Well, this, this here is just a chilling unit. Yeah, yeah. bottling machine. Uh, effectively, it does bottle 2,000 uh, bottles an hour yep. if you get it at the right pace. Yep. Uh, but bigger scale breweries will obviously produce a hell of a lot more than that and a hell of a lot quicker. Absolutely. Um, and with our large product list, we do make things a little bit harder for 
as well. Yeah, well, that's that's right. So, right. but yeah, but you give you give the, um, the 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 people the opportunity to take home every beer that they can they can that's buy. That's exactly on that's exactly right. And sometimes we do disappoint them because we can't quite keep up with that's, demand. That's fair enough. But uh, we do mail ordering systems as well, so that usually keeps people happy, um, and they always come back for more anyway. Fantastic. That's the idea. That's that's what it's all about. Good on you, Josh. No worries. Thanks very much. Thank you, John. So at one point in its life, the Bush Shack Brewery was once called Wicked Ale, but when you look at the surroundings, you can see why it's now the Bush Shack Brewery. We'd like to thank Daniel, Josh and the team down here at Bush Shack Brewery. Cheers. So, time to bottle our beer. Most of you out there who have done home brewing in the past or are still doing home brewing, you might be using your smaller 375ml stubbies. Personally, bottling, it's not too flash. It takes a long time to bottle uh, and you need a lot of small stubbies to begin with. Also, nowadays, the newer glass bottles aren't really made for second use. They're all single use glass bottles, so you've got higher potential for breakages um, and also explosions. So just bear that in mind, always look for the recycle, uh, recyclable or refillable glass. These are no refill or recyclable glass. It actually says it just on the top here. But <clears throat> how many stubbies do you need to fill a whole batch? Quite a few, so you need a fair bit in reserve. Just another note as well, you'll see here I'm using all amber glass. Amber bottles are made for a reason. You've also got the dark green glass and you've even now got black bottles. Clear glass allows for the light to penetrate into your beer and cause a lot of problems with flavour and ageing of the beer. Amber bottles are like your tinted sunglasses or your window tinting. They filter out that sunlight and stop any of those problems. So, we're not using small bottles. We are using the larger bottles. These are all 750 mil. Now, for you purists out there, block your ears. Most companies now are making plastic. The PET bottles, the, the PET bottles. These are food safe, they're recyclable, and they're also an amber, and they're plastic. A couple of benefits with plastic. They don't break if you drop them. Also, if you haven't got things quite right, uh, they don't explode. They just expand and they get very tight, but they won't explode. Now, some of you may like these, some of you don't like these. The problem with them is you can't store your beer for a long period of time because the CO2 will eventually leach out of them and your beer will be flat. So, good for short term. Good for beginners. If this is your first batch, like Marlin's, absolutely fantastic. On to the next option, <clears throat> the flip top glass bottles like the Grolsch bottles, the German beer Grolsch. Uh, the flip top bottles are absolutely fantastic. They're a heavy gauge glass, nice and solid. Flip them over, it's a bit slippery, pop it on, lock it down, gives a really good seal. The best thing about these is they're reusable. Once you've finished drinking your beer, clean them out as per usual, and you can now buy replaceable silicon grommets to reseal it. So it makes cleaning a lot easier. You don't have to worry about cleaning this rubber grommet or the silicon grommet. You just take these off, replace them, good to go. Absolutely fantastic. On to something that I've been doing for a while. You can still get refillable glass bottles. It takes some looking for, however. I find these in the classifieds, Gumtree, things like that. There's a lot of old home brewers out there now that are going to kegging or something like that and they want to get rid of their old glass bottles. These were the old original ones. This is an old Swan Brewery one. It's refillable. These were the old bottles you used to take back as kids to the shop and get 10 cents a bottle for. Nice heavy gauge glass. You can use these time and time again. After all, that's why they were originally made. 
and here we use a crown top. So that's the bottling. Don't worry all you keggers out there, we're going to talk about kegging in a couple of weeks time. Here and here, they're not really beer drinkers. In fact, we heard a little rumor that they are more into their bourbons and their whiskies. So we thought we'd drag them down here and get them into craft brews. That second beer that you were given there, Riverside Lager, um, style of beer is a Munich Lager or a Hell Helles, as the uh, German translation goes. Um, very closely related to your Pilsner style of beer. Um, same ingredients except the balance of the ingredients is slightly different. So with your Pilsner, um, the hops are a bit more forward, the malt plays a support role, but with the Munich style lager, Riverside lager, changes. So the grain's more at the front of the beer, it's more pronounced, and then the same hops you'd find in your German Pilsner are there, but they play more of a supportive role. Talking through all these beers, it's how you balance your, your hops and your grain that'll give you your, your certain style of beer. Cloudy German wheat beers, um, I did mention before, beer styles are how you balance your hops and your grain, but with your wheat beers, they're a whole different entity to themselves. The, uh, it's the yeast that will give it the obscure and uh, yeah, great flavours that, that are attached with wheat beers. So um, with the wheat, with German wheat beer, we have up from big sort of uh, candy banana, lolly bananas, uh, vanilla. Um, as obscure as it may sound, some kind of uh, bubblegum, juicy fruit bubblegum type character, as hot as it may seem, but, um, and these flavours are all derived from the yeast. If you feel the urge, you feel the need to heighten the senses, you can uh, give the beer a swirl, a sniff, and then um, let them flavours work on the palate. So, um, get your Angus Pale Ale there, mate. So, um, this is a American Pale Ale. Um, when I say American Pale Ale, the um, American craft beer scene, they're probably the world leaders, they're about 10, 15 years ahead of our scene. Um, and they've come up with a lot of new hop varieties which are quite big, bold and uh, quite pungent. And um, find the uh, hop characters can be some, somewhat too much for some, for some, for some uh, drinkers, but um, yeah, we've got some nice hop flavour, some citrus type character predominantly coming through. Um, Flavours that I can get on my on my nose and uh, on the palate is some kind of passion fruit, grapefruit, guava type flavours, which I find quite appealing. And um, yeah, on the tail ale, you get a good good punch, good bang of bitterness there to sort of round out the beer. So yeah, that's our Angus tail ale. There you go, Daniel and Kieran, two traditionally not really beer drinkers. They like their they like their whiskies, they like their Canadian clubs. But I think we've actually found one that they both like. Boys, the one the one that we both like is the um, the wheat heritage beer. It's very like soft taste. It's very mellow, not bitter. That's what we both fell in love with. Uh, another thing we found interesting was the Angus Pale Ale. It had an amazing kind of smell to it, and you kind of tasted it, but then it hit you with the bitterness after. Yeah. But we definitely both did like the heritage wheat beer. So there you go. Regardless of what your tastes are, we can guarantee you will find a craft beer that you like. Yeah.